Hi everyone and welcome to another video on communication skills. Friends, my name is Sanjay Ahuja and I'm the owner and founder of TalkWrite, a school for communication skills. Friends, this is my third video on workplace writing. In my first video, I talked to you about the pyramid principle. In my second video, I talked about how you should draft your written communication or your emails if you want to encourage action. I will leave the links to both these videos in the description box if you're watching this on YouTube and if you're watching this on LinkedIn I will leave them in the comment box. Now friends in this video I'm going to talk about what you should do if you want to explain or inform in your emails. So let's get started right away. So friends if you want to explain or inform it could be various categories. It could take various forms. What are those? Now maybe you're giving some background information or maybe you're providing some data on a project to a new team member or you could be giving a progress update to your boss. Now these are just two or three categories which I've mentioned out here. There could be many more. It may not be possible for me to mention all the categories uh, in this particular area if you want to explain or inform in your emails. But these could be a few forms your email or your communication could take. So let's move ahead. What are some of the rules you need to remember if you are writing in this particular category? The first one is that it does not need a call to action. Because you are informing in your emails or you're explaining something, it does not necessarily need a call to action. However, it needs to have a clear agenda up front. You should clearly state what is the purpose of your email and what are you going to explain in that email. You need to get the right balance of detail. Now, explanatory emails sometimes can get a little long, but you need to get the right balance of detail. It should not be too less. It should not be too much. You want to make sure that you're not being over explaining or stating the obvious. When an email gets too long, when you're explaining something, uh, they should not sound repetitive. So just be careful that you should not over explaining or stating the obvious in your emails. And last, at the same time, you're giving a clear picture of the issue at hand. So these are some of the rules which you need to remember if you're writing an email in this particular category. So let's move ahead. So friends, what I would recommend is that you follow the Minto pyramid principle if you are writing an email to explain or inform. Now, I have made a separate video on the pyramid principle and I'm not going to go into the details of that. You might want to refer to that video as to what the pyramid principle is all about. But just in short, I would like to repeat that as far as the pyramid principle goes, you start with the answers or the conclusion. You move on to the supporting arguments and then you move on to the reasoning. So you should follow the pyramid principle if you're writing an email in this particular category. Now, let's take a situation. Let us say that Joydeep is an IT manager who's writing an email to one of his team members. Now, the goal of that email is to explain the workflow of the company. Now, Joydeep has followed the... Now, in this particular category, Joydeep is explaining the workflow. So, Joydeep has followed the pyramid principle in communicating with Prashant, who is one of his team members. So if you look at his, this particular email, in the first paragraph, Joydeep starts with the answer or the conclusion or the purpose of that email that he has come to know from Prashant's line manager that Prashant is having some difficulty in understanding the process workflow of the company and he has empathized with him. The second part of the email, Joydeep describes that there are four departments in the company, in design, programming, coding and marketing. He then goes on to describe in crisp points what is a workflow between these four organizations, four uh, departments. And he concludes his email by saying that Prashant will have very limited interaction with marketing. So you see how Joydeep has broken down his email into three parts. He starts with the answer of the conclusion first. He goes on with the supporting arguments and then the reasoning. So this is where Joydeep has followed the pyramid principle to the T. And I'm sure if Prashant were to read that email, he would get a general idea. Of course, it is not it will not have all the details. He will get a general idea what the workflow in the company is all about. So friends, I hope that you have found value in this particular video. If you have, please give me a like. If you're watching this on YouTube, please subscribe to my channel. And I will be back with more videos in communication skills. Thank you and have a wonderful day.